is Don King. I'm one of the deacons here at Bay River Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Um, it looks weird sitting here looking at an empty church, but we don't have to all be here every time to, to worship together. Uh, Y'all are in your homes. We're here, but the Spirit is with us, and we're united in heart and soul, and we're here to worship the Lord. You know, the, uh, the church has tried to continue to minister to our people through this time. We have uh, Miss Wendy with the Children's Church that streams a Children's Church service every week on our Bay River Baptist Church Children's Church Facebook page. Uh, and we have continually tried to do our services here. We have yet to miss a Sunday. Satan has tried to interrupt us a little with some technical issues a few weeks, but we've always managed to somehow get the word out and the message out. I want you all to realize that the church is praying for you, uh, that we're here for you, and that we will meet any of your needs if we can. Uh, all you have to do is call the church phone number or contact one of the deacons, and we will get back with you and resolve your issue at all possible. Uh, Lord's put a lot of things in my heart the last few weeks. And one of the things he put on my heart was that people may be questioning why God allows this to happen. Why has he allowed 200,000 people to die? Uh, why has he allowed so many people to be uh, infected with this virus? And it's, uh, I mean, I'm not a worldly scholar or a, or a highly thought of theologian, but the answer is, in my mind, in my heart, is that God loves us. And he wants us to come back to him. He wants us to walk with him. And that too much of the world has turned away from him and has looked technology and our government and our leaders and our money and our wealth to solve problems. And the reality is, it is God who will solve us. He chastised the Hebrew nation, and those were his chosen people. And he will chastise us. And I think he is trying his best to say to us, turn back to me. So what I want you to do is think about using this time to study your Bible more, pray more, draw closer to God, and to reach out and touch the world around us. And as we pray now, then Brother Woody will come. Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your blessings and what you have continually done for us. We know that we have nothing, Lord, unless it comes from you. And we know that you always have a purpose and a plan for everything. Sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes it hurts for us to be chastised. But, Lord, you do it because you love us. We ask that you with us, guide us, and direct us, and keep us safe until we can gather together again. Thank you, Don. My name is Woody Oliver, and I'm the interim pastor at Mid River Baptist Church. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, if you are a member of Mid River Baptist Church, welcome to our Sunday morning service online. This morning, I want to walk through a passage in Ezekiel 37. And so if you'll turn there in your Bibles. And as you're turning there, um, I just need to let you know that where I stand when it comes to the Bible. I am a believer that uh, the Bible speaks to all of our situations and all of our circumstances in the world, not just back when it was written, but also today. And, and I'm looking at a passage today in Ezekiel 37, and I see a direct correlation to where we are with regards to COVID-19. And the Lord laid on my heart to begin preaching through a series of messages in the next coming, few coming weeks, getting us ready for when the, the COVID-19 restrictions are, are uh, basically, when they begin to be removed. And we're able to come back together and worship together as a body in one location. I want to make sure that I'm prepared for that. But I also
also want you to be prepared. And so in Ezekiel 37, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 11, and if you need to know each week where I'll be in the Bible, you can look on our, on our uh, Facebook page, the New River Baptist Church Facebook page, and every Saturday I put the scripture reference that I'll be using. And I think I put on there last night or yesterday, verses 1 through 15, that I'll be looking at, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 11. And with that in mind, I want to share with you just a short poem that illustrates the human condition of wanting what's next. And the reason I want to share that with you is because I get the sense that we're getting to a point in this shelter at home, this quarantine type society, that we are wanting and wishing for the next. And, and that can be dangerous at times. So let me share this with you. You, you may have heard it before. It says, first I was dying to finish high school and start college. Then I was dying to finish college and start my career. Then I was dying to get married and have children. Then I was dying for my children to grow up and get out. Then I was dying to retire. And now I'm just dying. And suddenly I've realized that I've forgotten to live. Well, perhaps that's where you are at some measure with this COVID-19. Not that you're not living, but you're, you're wishing and wanting for the next. And so I, I ask you this, do you spend more time wanting and wishing for the next as opposed to enjoying and using the moment that you're living in? What I mean by that is, that is, are you wanting beyond what's today so much more than what is today? And if that's the case, then people would say, well, so you're so concerned on the dying aspect that you're not living. Now, I say that, and, and don't take it you know, as, as a black and white statement, but take it at what part of that might affect you, and what part of that might be part of your life. Have you, at some level, felt a little bit empty, maybe desperate, maybe wanting something different? Maybe at some levels, kind of dry because you haven't been able to come and worship together? Well, maybe, just maybe, God has something in the works that we don't quite understand. And maybe, just maybe, God is about to affect a miracle that we haven't yet conceptualized in our own minds. Well, he did it for the Israelites on many occasions as you go through the Old Testament. And he can do it and has done it in our lives as well. And so with that in mind, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37 because I really believe this gives us a glimpse of what God can and will do in our lives. Now, I, I, I understand, and you may say, well, we're not the Israelites, and we're not back in that time, and I understand that. But by looking at this passage, what we see, we get a glimpse of God and who he is and what he can do. And in this message, and in this passage, verses 1 through 11, I want, I want to look at three things. The first one is in verses 1 through 4, the current reality. God is going to show Ezekiel the current reality of the situations with the nation of Israel. And then I want to skip over to verse 11 because I want to show you, as God shows Ezekiel, the truth of the matter. And then I want to come back to verses 5 through 10 and I'm going to show you the fix, both for the Israelites and then what I think would be for us. And so in Ezekiel 37, beginning in verse 1, we read where it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. So let's stop there for a second. And I think I said verses 1 through 4. It's actually verses 1 through 3. But here's what's going on. 
Ezekiel has a supernatural encounter. It was God supernaturally intervening in the life of a man, the man being Ezekiel, who was a prophet. And God takes Ezekiel and he lifts him above his everyday existence. Now, other times, if you read through the book of Ezekiel, you'll see that God has given Ezekiel visions. And each time that God has given Ezekiel visions, Ezekiel has seen the glory of God. But this time, what God shows him is a valley full of bones. And it's not just a pile of bones. It's a whole valley of bones. In fact, it says that God took me back and forth. It's almost like, like taking a, a, in a, in a human um, concept, a modern-day official, and helping him to examine this disaster area back and forth. I believe that God wants Ezekiel to understand the magnitude and how, how huge and how immense this valley of dry bones are. The vision in my mind is similar. If you were to look at the old westerns and the out west and as pioneers are traveling through, you'll see maybe some really dry, bleached bones of a dead animal somewhere. And I think that's what Ezekiel saw, but he saw a valley of them. And these bones are, are, are dry, they're, they're perhaps white, they're bleached, they're brittle, they're bare. In, in, in a great sense, it's a de depressing sight that God is showing Ezekiel. And, and if I were to kind of look at our current day reality, and I'm not saying that this is, this is an exact correlation, but if God were to give us a vision, take us out of our current reality, and our current reality is that we're sheltering at home, we're, we're, we're at home, and as Don was saying, you know, maybe many of you are reading your Bible, maybe right now there's quite a few that are listening to this message, it's your part of worship, maybe you listen to Christian music, and, and so, so you see that as realities in your life. But if God was to give us a vision, he might show us all the empty church buildings. Dry and bare. Now, we understand that the church is not a building. We might even say that while the building is empty, the church is full, no doubt. But the fact of the matter is the churches are empty because of what we're experiencing with COVID-19. That's the current reality. You may not see it because you're at home. And if you're looking at this today, you're seeing me and, and this pulpit area. You're not seeing the empty pews, but they're there. And then they're in most of our churches. And while we speculate about when this won't be empty, maybe what God is helping us to understand is that we ought to be listening to him and hearing his voice not trying to come up with our own solutions. And so if we go back to this passage, after Ezekiel is shown the current reality of a spiritually dry people, God asks him, and he probes him with this question, Son of man, can these dry bones live? Now, understand the context here. What God is showing Ezekiel is that the Israelite people, they're crying out because they're desperate, they're dry, they're disconnected, they're scattered. And, and, and God has shown Ezekiel that, and he said, Ezekiel, can this situation change? Can this circumstance change? He's probing Ezekiel with this. Perhaps it's a test. Basically, Ezekiel, where there was once life, there's no life. And these dry relics are filling the, the, the view of Ezekiel. It's within his scope, and he's being asked, he's being probed, can these bones live? Ezekiel, I want you to evaluate the situation. I'm taking you on a tour. What do you think? And Ezekiel comes through in the greatest of ways. He says, only you know, God. What is he saying? He's saying, I, 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 I'm seeing this huge valley of bones, but you're bigger than that. I'm seeing dry and desperate people, but you're bigger than that. Where I see something impossible, I know because of you it's possible. God, you're still in the miracle business. And that's what he says to God. Oh, Lord God, you know. I don't know, but you know. 
And what I see here is God saying to us that, you know what? On the other side of this circumstance, on the other side of this situation, okay, I'm God. I've got it. Get ready. Get ready for what I'm going to do. And so that's the current reality. The Israelite people, they're, they're crying out to God. They're scattered. They're, they're desperate. They're dry. Our churches are empty. Our pews, nobody's sitting in them right now. Right? God, only you know. Only you know. And we know how big you are. And then what God does with Ezekiel, he says, let me tell you what this means. Let me tell you the truth of the matter. So we go to verse 11. And he says, then he said to me, Ezekiel speaking, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. That's what all these dry bones are. God says to Ezekiel. It's the Israelite people who are crying out. They're saying they're cut off. They're scattered in so many different directions. They're being asked to acclimate to other cultures and other societies. And what they want is to come back to Jerusalem, to come back into Israel. And they want to be with God in that way. They want to be with one another. And the term here, or the key, to me, the key words here are cut off. That's the key term. They're cut off. And God says, Ezekiel, the people have lost hope. Their spiritual condition of not being connected to one another and not being connected to God is because of their disobedience. And when, when the Israelites are disobedient, God pushes them away. He moves them away. He told me to do that. Their disobedience has caused God to scatter them. And I believe God does that. To create this desire in their hearts that we want God. That we don't want this that we're in. We don't want to be scattered. We don't want to be disconnected. We want God. To be connected once again, perhaps it goes along with the saying, right? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Has your heart grown fonder to be in worship? Because, because we are, in a sense, secluded from one another. I see that as part of our current situation. A virus has cut us off from one another in ways that we're used to. And I'm not saying that we can't come up with new and creative ways. But if you're like me, I want that human touch. My wife asked me this morning as I was getting to leave, ready to leave the house to come down here and, and share this message. She said, are you excited? And I'm like, no, I'm not really excited. What excites me is to walk in and hug on people and love people and hear people and listen to people and then share God's message with people face to face. I know we have a pretty good substitute, but it's a substitute. What excites me is when God creates that miracle and he reconnects us. Amen. We've been cut off from one another. And I don't know about you, but for me, when I'm cut off from my brothers and sisters in Christ, I feel at some level cut off from God. Frank Newport, who used to be the editor and chief of the Gallup organization, writes this. He says, the central organizational pattern of most modern religions in the U.S. is group worship, which has temporarily, for the most part, been mandated out of existence. The most dramatic result has been the exceedingly quick shift of religious services from in-person to virtual, to virtual online worship. The abrupt cessation of in-person worship in churches, synagogues, and mosques around the country is one of the most significant sudden disruptions in the practice of religion in U.S. history. Amen. Think about that for a second. We've been scattered because of a virus. We can't come together. And the Israelites couldn't come together. And in this passage, we see their miserable inner condition. And it was as, as bleak as their outer condition. Their outer condition reflected what was on the inside of them. And they're crying out to God. 
They've been exiled. Jerusalem has been destroyed. They're in captivity. They're suffering from an extreme case of spiritual emptiness, dryness, and despair. And that's the valley of the dry bones. It doesn't look good. They're losing, if not have already lost hope, that they'll ever come back to God. And while our condition may not be miserable, think about the correlation. Exiles in our homes, right? Our church building is empty. We're captive to a virus. Essentially, we're cut off from one another. I know there's ways we're not. We have technology, we have phones, we have letters, we have, we have online presence, but it's not the same. You know, I'm reminded years ago when big companies used to, they created an automated service online, or excuse me, on the phone. You call, and, and in order to streamline you getting help, in order to reduce the, the overhead of, of employee costs, you would get a message, you know, if you want to do this, press 1. If you want to do this, press 2. And then you go there, and if you want to do this, press 1. And if you want to do this, and you sit here for like, like what, five minutes, hitting all these, and then, and then it's like you don't get your answer. Right, and then after after many years, companies started going back and say, oh, we got a lot of person on the other end of the line. Right, there's great value in that. So God shares the current reality of Ezekiel. He says, here is the truth of the matter. And then he says in verse 4, beginning in verse 4, here is the fix. Then he said to me, this is God speaking to Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the me in this passage here now. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe and to be slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet. A vast army. Three, past, three verses here that I think are just key to this whole passage. The first one is verse 4, where it says, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And then verse 5, it says, I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Amen. And then in verse 6, he says, I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. And don't miss this. He says, Then you will know that I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's all for God the glory. And so as, as Ezekiel is prophesying, he hears this noise. And he sees this movement. He sees disconnection become connection. He sees chaos become order. He sees this, this, this a shape taking form and a framework. And then he sees harmony as, as bodies come together. How incredible of a sight he has in his vision. And then God breathes in them. And we see this life, this great life, appear. And it all happened because God made it happen. God spoke his word, and God gave life. And did you, did you notice that, that he used Ezekiel to accomplish this? God could have just, just spoken, and God could have just breathed, and this could have all happened. But he used Ezekiel, and that intrigues me. That is what God does. He uses people to accomplish his will. Amen. He uses Ezekiel, he uses me and you. And I believe that we are actually, in, in, in the beginning of the 
this stage of a great revival that God is going to use me and you as we as we get beyond this COVID-19, as we start to come out of these, these uh, COVID-19 influence restrictions, he's going to create this revival. Now, now, let me define that. Because revival is a big word that has all kinds of meanings depending on your context. What I'm talking about is a great church revival. Not so much a, an individual spiritual revival, because I believe in many levels, spiritually people have grown through this. Not everyone, but I, from what I'm hearing is, is, is people are, are doing more devotions. People are listening to more messages online. There's been a, a greater influence of that in people's lives. But we still don't have the church revival. And Christ made the church. And I believe God is preparing us for that. And he wants to, to use me and you. And when I talk about church revival, what I'm talking about is coming to church and being excited. And as my wife asked me this morning, are you excited? I'm always glad to share God's word. And I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you've tuned in. But what excites me is when, when, when God creates life in the church body. And together we can come and experience that. A church that is alive and excited. For people to be connected. For people to be serving. For, for people to be worshiping together. And what I mean by that is not just getting up on Sunday because it's our pattern. And, and our rhythm. And it's our motions that we come and we come. And, and we just go through the motions. I'm talking about wanting to be in church. Wanting to be here. Wanting to be together. Wanting to worship God together. Wanting to serve. That's what I think God is preparing us for. I truly believe it's God who's going to breathe life back into our buildings. And he's going to breathe life back into our fellowship. But I think we must, must consider that we do everything with a purpose as we move forward. Because we recognize now, God can cut all this off, right? If he wants. If a virus can cut it off, what do you think God can do? So coming back together. So here's what I see in this passage. It's not up to really me and you. God does it. Amen. And to breathe life back into our church buildings and to breathe life into us. We have to have the trinity. We have to have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It has to all be there. Because it's God who breathes life into his nation, and it's God who breathes life into his church, and it's God who uses us to accomplish his will. So what does that mean for me? That means I don't have all the answers. In fact, I probably don't have a lot. I don't have the solution. I know from a human perspective that the leadership of each church begins to prepare and plan for the day we reopen our sanctuary. But I also know that for leadership and pastors, it has to be in prayer, seeking God's wisdom, seeking God's face, asking the Holy Spirit, what does this need to look like? And then your role. What is this saying to you? Are you ready to come back to church? Are you ready to come together in one place as the body? I know you're probably saying, oh, I'm ready to go. No, 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 no. I mean, are you ready at a heart level? What do you need to do? I want to give you one suggestion. And then this week I'm going to post some devotions online. Look each night for, for a post, and I'll do one starting tonight. I'm going to give you some suggestions of other things you can personally do to prepare yourself to get ready to come back to corporate worship. Corporate meaning coming together physically. The first thing I want to encourage you with, when you come back to church, when, we're, we're, when, when, when the leadership and, and our government and it all comes together saying, hey, you can come back into the building, I want you to be ready to receive a thank you from somebody. What do I mean by that? I mean, I, I want you to be ready to receive somebody saying, thank you for that phone call, or thank you for that card, or thank you for that message. What do I mean by that? 
what have you done for somebody else in the body? The virus says you can't come together unless you're all masked and all set up. I get that. And some of you are cautious, and I, that's, that's prudent and that's wise, that you're not coming together. But that doesn't stop us from making a phone call, sending a text message, sending a card. Would you do that this week? Reach out to somebody, somebody that you're connected to and not being able to be connected to. So the day you walk into church, you'll say, thank you so much for calling me. Thank you so much for the card you sent me. Thank you for the text messages. Thanks for praying for me. Thanks for thinking about me. That's the first suggestion that I want you to work on this coming week. Preparing yourself when we come back together. At a heart level, are you ready? Tonight, I'll, I'll give you another suggestion to look for that later today. If you're listening to this message and you don't know who God is because you don't know who Jesus Christ is, and at many levels you're confused, I want to encourage you to get on your knees and, and seek the Lord and pray to God. You know, if there's any fear in your life, if, if you're not sure where you're going, if you were to die, you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. In this world of chaos and turmoil, Christ, Christ is the answer. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, who came to earth, who walked this earth, who taught, who showed us, who created all kinds of miracles, who were willing, was willing then to die for our sins. And God put him in the grave, and three days later he raised him up to show the power of a resurrected life. I want you to be a part of that. So what do you do? Get on your knees, just ask God. Ask God, forgive me. God, I turn, I turn from my sinfulness. I turn from my sins. I, I want to follow Jesus Christ. My name is Willie Oliver. You can look me up on Facebook. You can send me a message. Or you can look up on, on Savannah River Baptist Association's website. My telephone number is there. Call me. Let's have a conversation. God bless you, and I pray this week, I pray that you're reaching out to somebody, preparing for when we come back together. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, prepare us. Lord, because I know you're going to do something great in our midst. Father, I don't exactly know what that looks like. But Lord, I know you've laid on my heart about a church revival. Lord, and, and, and uh, I'm sensing some excitement among our pastors and our churches in this area. Father, I can't wait. But Father, I won't miss the day. Lord, thank you for your great love. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And thank you, Father, for those that are listening today. Father, thank you for those that will give their life to Christ in this moment. Lord, thanks for loving us first. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.